So, Dr. Aang, I wanted to ask you a few things. Ah, oh, howdy, howdy. Good. So, I, you're, you are a very plain-spoken person, and I do appreciate it. So, there's a couple things I wanted to ask you about. The f- that's me, shopper. You actually do support a $15 minimum wage? Yes, I do. Why? It's 10 years in the future. It's not $15 going immediately tomorrow. Okay. And the way I like to say it is that you could look at the alternative. The alternative says, let's go and have a $4 minimum wage. How about not having one at all? Well, let's go down to four for a moment. Okay. When you go down from where we are to a four dollar minimum wage, then you know everybody becomes essentially a common laborer. That's uh, not true. People get new jobs, they get new skills. If you look at the history of lowering minimum wages or not having minimum wages, it's a race to the bottom. Singapore doesn't have a minimum wage, and they have some of the wealthiest people in the world. Yes, they, well, we have some of the wealthiest people in the world. And many people are wealthy in Singapore. Many immigrants are, and that's because they move on up. Because Singapore is a city-state. It's a very different thing. Why? It's a very small community. Well, I mean, Torrance is a small community. I, I know, but we live in the middle of a United States of America. So my, let me try to finish answering my okay. question. Okay. So my point is that when you go up to a higher minimum wage, what you do is you give the people at the bottom chances to spend, have more spending money than just paying okay. for the food and rent, or not even make, paying enough food. And so all of a sudden they have spare money to actually put and buy other goods and services besides the absolute fair necessities. Portland, Oregon was one of the first cities to have a minimum wage against, uh, you know, what the state wanted or the feds wanted. And this, literally, business is booming there. So let me ask you so, a few things. Okay. So, anyway, that, okay. That, so, so this is my response to that. Yeah, sure. They're pushing the $15 minimum wage here, and it's supposed to take in full effect by 2022. They are already automating many of the machines. They're getting rid of the entry-level workers in Wendy's, at Whole Foods, in McDonald's. There is a, there's one at, over there on Torrance and Victor. They're going to remove the gonna, human employees. And, they're gonna do and that. those people are going to be out of work. And they're going to do that. They've been doing that whether the minimum wage goes up or the minimum wage goes down. Okay. Now, here's the other thing I really take offense to. That's no, I don't believe that's true because hiring and being able to pay someone an entry-level wave of $9 an hour allows that individual to have money, to earn skills, to work up the ladder and get better skills and get a higher-paying job. My first job was $5 an hour at the cost or freeze. My first job was even lower than that. So when you do that, you're going to make it harder for people to have a job. Now, here's something else. So you, 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 Here's the other thing I take exception to. You're saying that... Let's raise the wage. But see, governments don't raise wages. All they do is mandate that businesses pay more or not hire or raise their rates or go out of business. It's not your money or my money. That It's, it's a destructive policy. And, and, and the trouble is if you look at the history, you look at the history of how the minimum wage got put in, the whole, that, point, the whole point is that when, when you have an economy that you say, I want to hire uh, people and give them a very low-paying job, like picking garlic, as a good example. Okay. The, 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 if you read how the farm workers are treated, even today in the state of California, they're exempt from a lot of Okay, but, but hold on one second. Their, their life is so much better here compared to in their home countries. There was a story about this garlic worker, and what he did is he got paid a very low wage, but they actually come to this country under a special visa program yes. where they're essentially indentured service. They go out of the... They're not indentured service. They can choose not to work. But once they come into America and, and they're, they're, you know, uh, Mexicans, citizens, then they... they don't have freedom to walk outside of the compound that the company that hires them. But they choose to work there, do they not? They choose to work there, so it's yeah. a choice. No, it's a choice of something compared to being in Mexico. Exactly. What's wrong with that? Well, let me tell you what the kind of abuse is, is that people then, when they do their work, they get to harvest, they get paid this very low wage, and it's not a minimum wage. Let me finish. And then, by the time, I saw this article in the LA Times. By the time the company that hired them to do that job, which has full control of 100% of their lives, 
Tupperware. But it's not in control because no, they don't no, have to no, work no. there. Under that, visa that is program, not true. No. Under that visa program, they can't even go outside the compound. They're not slaves. That, that is not true. They can get other slaves. jobs. Yes, you did. No, said you said they were. Servants. But you said they have 100% control. That yes, makes them do. slaves, and that's no, wrong. No, no, you said but you're still not answering my question. Governments don't give money. It's the business's money. And you're ignoring that. No, that. Let me finish this example. And, and so what happened is, then they went and said, oh, we provided transportation for you. We provided the tools. We provided this. We provided that. So that by the time the guy had finished his three weeks of garlic picking, he owed the company money. Well, now, when did this and happen and where? This happened in California, you know, about 10 or 15 years ago. And okay, so it's not up, today. No, but it was written up in the LA Times. Okay, but that's a that's a worker abuse. That has nothing to do with the minimum wage. You're talking about something totally different. No, what I'm saying. Yes, you are. You're talking about something else. Now, we're not going to come to agreements about this, but it disturbs me. No, it's not to come to agreements. It disturbs me that you think it's okay to dictate to a business that they have to pay more. Have you ever run a business? Uh, yes, actually. Well, I haven't quite run it, but... Oh, okay, so you on. don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't. Uh, Those are I, your I, words. I, Do you, uh, yeah, now, me, Mike Griffiths has run a business. Let me modify, let, let, let me make it a little clear. I, 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 the reason I hedge my bet is that I grew up in a Chinese market. In New York City? In New York City. And when I was about 15 or 16 years old, I said to myself, I said, you know, I, I handled enough of people's dirty underwear for a lifetime. Okay. And then I, I walked around saying, I'm trying to go to school and learn something. And then after a couple of weeks walking around, I said, I got the wrong way of looking at this. Okay. You know, here I am, I'm a 15-year-old kid, and I already know how to run a business. I know everything about a Chinese laundry. Okay. And so I have one thing under my belt already. I could open a Chinese laundry tomorrow okay. as a 15 or 16 year old kid, and it would be a successful laundry. Did you do it? And when my parents were doing it, I was working and I learned everything. So I got a question for you. What did they pay their workers? Why? Well, I, I basically. Well, you don't know? I worked for my parents. They, they. Okay. Did they pay you a salary? No. no okay. So that's a family. But what did they pay their other workers? No, they didn't have any. It's a family business. Oh. Okay. So you don't but, but know. But I still know how to run a business. That's my. But point. you haven't. I know how to deal with customers. I was doing all of that. So. so but you haven't run a business. So, you, can you admit that you have not run a business? I. That I. I offered you exactly what I did do. You would probably say no. I didn't run a business like Mike Griffith did. That's true. Okay. But I would not say that I have no business experience. Okay. I didn't say you didn't have business experience. So let's switch topics. I told you what I did, what I had. So you don't have experience with signing the front of a check for an employee? No, I do not. Okay. Second question. Do you want to shut down ExxonMobil? Absolutely not. Okay. But you say you want to get rid of the hydrofluoric acid. Now, look at my campaign. It's a big hydrofluoric acid MHF risk. My point is... But you want to get rid of it? Let me, let, let me answer that, okay? The whole point is that the ExxonMobil explosion should have never happened in about okay. a million years. That's their previous, my estimate of their previous... It company. should have never happened, and, period. And, and, and it did, and that's a game changer. And so... Why? I just want to understand. it shouldn't have happened in about a million years, and it happened in 60. D is that what they said? What happened? Okay, I, I'll make you the details of where I come up with that. So that's a, that's a fair question. They what they said when the, they have to they had to provide a what was called the worst case off-site consequence analysis uh, to the EPA, and that's where they disclosed that their estimate for a worst case would be 5,200 pounds hydrofluoric acid release, and that it would injure about 250,000 people. It would injure 100. So they and, wouldn't die though. They wouldn't be killed though, and then other because I just I, way, let me. I got to interrupt with that just really quickly because those Someone those flyers because those flyers yes. from the from the TRA are false because they say death zone, and what? you just said that they wouldn't all die. Come on, it's well, propaganda. No, 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 I find no, no, it very no. offensive. One, no, it's one thing to be injured; it's another thing to die. I agree with you though. So, Believe so, me, death is a serious thing. I don't diminish so, that so me, severity. So okay, so what happened is the they weren't required. 
to do a death calculation, just an injury, okay. although some could lead to death. And other people then said, well, okay. we know about the, the, the amount and this and that, and that's what they calculated the estimate of the death okay. zone. Okay. Okay. So many would die, thousands, many thousands would die. So what what do you want to do? Make it very clear. What do you want to do about ExxonMobil? Because you're the scientist. Yes. Now let me answer the ExxonMobil. So because the explosion should never have happened in about a million years, and let me give you that calculation since you're recording this, I'm sure. That's okay. I don't mind. I get to do it. I don't have to have your permission. I You're, didn't ask that. I, so, I don't mind. Okay. Yeah, more than that. I don't mind. No Good. Problem. I wish you were like that with yeah. the congressional candidate I confronted two days ago. Whatever. Uh, the thing is that when they were asked, is they had to provide this offsite consequence analysis, which is the impact. Okay. But they didn't have to provide the probability. So, okay. so somebody, I think Ron, must have been Nick Green or something, I saw the video, they asked a, a, a high-level executive guy, so w what's the likelihood of this thing happening? Okay. And he said, okay. once in a few lifetimes of the universe. And the lifetime of the universe, according to the best physicist estimates, about 13.7 billion years, so multiply it by a few, once in 40 billion years. That there should yeah. never be an explosion. The, the catastrophe of the kind that they did the offsite consequence. Now, let me ask you this question. We have another... Now, no, because we need to make this very simple. There's another refinery in El Segundo that's never had any problems. So how do you explain that? How do you explain that you've got... How do you explain that El Segundo doesn't have any problems? No, no, I'm the person you're trying to get the vote for. I get to ask the questions now. Okay, you are not explaining to me what the problem is with what's going on in El Segundo. Why has that refinery been fine and compared to this one? Let me finish answering one question at a time. I'm not trying to get your vote. I don't mind you videoing this because my platform is still my platform. I'm just trying to explain it to you as an interested citizen. I'm not doing And I get it, and I understand what you're saying. There never should have been an explosion. So let me finish this. Please, come on. The thing is that what they said, so I said got once in 40 billion years from them for a full catastrophe. Okay. So of the kind uh, that they had to register with the EPA. Okay. So I asked the question. Did you want to talk to him? Is that what? Uh, that, who's yeah. the artist called Wayne that has a big mural on there? I don't know. About a mural, yeah, I'm not but, sure. But ask one of these other gentlemen. Yeah, so, but I want to just wrap this up because I got to talk to some other people. Hold on, no, just let me finish. So, you've never run a business, but you want to force the 15 wage up, and you don't want to shut down ExxonMobil. I appreciate it. I don't want to shut down ExxonMobil. I 